I'm not going to, I typically review quite a bit. I'm not going to review too much today because I'm going to use some of the same scriptures. And um, it will be, it will be good. All right, we're talking about, I entitled this, The Spiritual Poison of Unforgiveness. The Spiritual Poison of Unforgiveness. Last week I actually gave you a couple of, uh, you know, when Dr. Leaf was here, the neuroscientist, she talked about the impact of unforgiveness on the brain. Y'all remember that? And she talked about the, the law of, of uh, entanglement in, in quantum physics. It's also known as the law of relationship. And it's pretty interesting. And she said how when you hold something against someone, your brain, in, in your brain, it is, it's like that person is sitting at the table with you. They may be miles away, maybe even gone. But if you don't forgive them, you're carrying them around with you and they're and, and, and they're like they're like in your head. And she said, when your brain when you carry unforgiveness, I don't know why I'm starting off like this, but when you when you carry unforgiveness, your brain goes operates in a chaotic state and it can't even think clearly. And if it stays in that state long enough, it'll start inflicting stuff sickness and de disease on your body. That's in the, a natural state. Um, there's another guy, uh, th th there's all kind of studies about forgiveness and talks about how it's, it's a disease and it's treated now. Unforgiveness is treated like a disease. And so, but everything they're discovering, Jesus talked about it long, long ago. And so we're calling it poison because um, I heard this a long time ago. You probably heard it that uh, some people say unforgiveness is like um, you drinking, po me drinking poison, hoping somebody else dies from it. See, unforgiveness doesn't hurt the other person. And that's why Jesus talked so much about it. Even in what we talked about in the offering, unforgiveness is lethal. And... And I talked about a little bit, I talked about you know, how we sip that, po you know, sipping that poison. Um, there's lies that we, that, we, that we tell ourselves and we just keep sipping the poison. And so I want to deal with some of those lies today. But well, what I want to do is I want to actually, okay, go through how do you forgive? Because it generated a lot of questions last week. Pastor, pastor, do I have to, <laughs> you know, when they start looking like that? <laughs> well, I had some questions, too. And see, I just assume, oh, everybody know that. But no, everybody doesn't know that. So we, we, we're going to deal with some of those. I want you to go with me, please, to uh, uh, Mark chapter 11, and then we're going to go back to Mark chapter 8, Matthew chapter 18. Mark chapter 11. We just, this is going to be pretty practical. I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of scriptures. Now, forgiveness is a dynamic subject, and I need forgiveness from God when I mess up, right? Yeah. Do you need forgiveness from God when you mess up? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so that's okay. I look like we're having unanimous on that one. Now, I need to forgive those who wronged me. Okay, it wasn't as dynamic on that one. No, okay, I'm going to help you. <laughs> you need to forgive folks who wrong you. Okay. Uh, and then there's another, one other section. You need to receive forgiveness from those you wronged. Okay, yeah, yeah. Some of us... Some of us have, have, have tipped the scale, and there's some folks still angry at us. And then I think I may throw this one in there. You need to forgive, learn how to forgive yourself. Yeah, you know, we carry stuff around. Man, I wish. I, well, you did. You stunk it up. It was bad, terrible, horrible. But just like, just like, <laughs> I mean, we all have. But God, like, you got to let yourself go. You're the only one carrying us around now. So you got to let yourself go, but we'll, 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 we'll get to that. So, okay. So somebody, so we, I think we have a general consensus. Somebody's going to wrong you, right? Yes. And you are going to wrong somebody. Yes. 
Okay, so let's, let's, let's just deal with it. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 um, and through 25 will serve as our foundation, has served as our foundation, says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Isn't that awesome? So therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Isn't that awesome? Okay. And verse 25 says, and. Now and is a what? What does and do? So and, and is saying, this is not a new thought. This is all going together. And season like we, we kind of don't talk much about this. But we're going to talk about and today. He said, and, whenever you stand praying, or sit, kneel, however you do it, if you have anything against anyone, do what? Yeah. Forgive them. That, or so that, your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Amen. Okay, now watch this here. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespassing. But pastor, you know, I just ain't feeling it right now. Okay, well, God ain't either. <laughs> Galatians 6, 7 still says, how many, how many of y'all want some mercy? How many, think, how many of y'all think you're going to need some mercy before the week is out? <laughs> how many of you think you're going to need some forgiveness before the week is out? So, so here's what he says. He said, see, if you don't give it, you're not going to get it. You're going to reap what you sow. God's like, it's a law. If you don't give it, I, I got to withhold it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he can make it any more plain than that. Okay, let's uh, read Matthew 18. We'll come back to Mark 11, I think, if you want to put something there. If not, we'll put it on the screen. Um, Matthew 18, 21, then Peter came to him, Jesus, saying, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I have to forgive him? Now, Peter thought he hung the moon seven times. That's about all I got for him, Jesus, seven times. <laughs> And Jesus said to him, no, I'm not saying to you seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, how many of y'all think, how many of you think that the same person is going to come to you and ask you to forgive him 490 times? Anybody? I was like, Pastor, I work with this fool. And, uh, you know, he said, no, we're not talking about the fool. But think about it. So what Jesus is saying is, you know what? In the natural, nobody's going to do that. No one's going to do that. But what he's saying is, however many times, however many times you need to forgive, however many times they ask you to forgive, you don't, you don't get all frustrated and angry and like, no, I, no, no. He said, no, however many times they need it. No. What we just read is a mandate. This is a commandment. This is not optional. This is not optional. Now you can you can frame it any way you want to, uh, but if you're a believer in, in the word and believer in, in, in the, the, the lordship of Jesus, he's telling you, you don't have any options when it comes to this. You gotta forgive people. You, you have to forgive. It, it's, it's not optional. And I think I told you last week, I, I, you know, I know many of you have too, but I, I've given Jesus my life. I, I've committed my life to him. And, and I understand how to follow orders. You know, I was, I was a military man. I gave my life to the U.S. Air Force. I, I signed on that. What did they say? What did I say? 
Oh, they were going to tell. Okay. Was that Wanda back there? Yeah. yeah. Wanda Jose. I'm going to put you on tape. Wanda Jose. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I do work alone. Okay. I work alone, baby. Thank you. <laughs> nah, it's okay. But, but, but I was under order. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a, a lawful order. I said, I said, I'll obey everything you tell me. Yeah. Lawful. When I came in the kingdom, I told Jesus the same thing. I said, everything, anything I see in your word, I'm going to commit to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, have I been perfect? Oh. How you know? Because you haven't been perfect. Right? But see, that has nothing to do with my commitment. I'm ki- so what do you mean? I'm still aiming that way. I may fall down, but I'm still, when I get up, I'm still aiming that way. I may not do it right today, but I'm aiming that way tomorrow. So I decided, Jesus, whatever you tell me to do, it, it, first of all, I know it's for my benefit. I know it's for my kingdom advancement. I know it's going to work out for my good. So if you tell me to forgive, that's what I'm going to do. It, it's, not, it's, a, it's a non-negotiable thing. It's got to be that way for all of us. And, and, I mean, th- he said, if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't forgive her for her foolishness, now you're cutting off. You may need a miracle over here, but I can't even get through because you got that unforgiveness blocking it. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He, he understands this. He was there. He was there when, when God put all this stuff. He understands. What I want to do is, see, if I can get them to set into motion things that will block. They got power over me. I can't make them do anything. But if I can get them to set into motion something simple that will block that anointing and the power God has given them. Like getting angry at somebody they don't even know. Now God spoke to me yesterday, uh, a couple of days yesterday, I think, on no, Friday, and He said, "Boy, but I've been, I've been forgiving everybody all all week. I've been forgiving about three, four times a day. Lord, I forgive a lady at prayer my She taking too long. I forgive. Uh, no, 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 no. What? Well, no, there's there's a there's a well, there's a reason for that. But here's what God told me. Here's something. Just just what He said." He said, you need to forgive people that you upset with that didn't do anything to you. They did something to somebody else. Do you ever get upset with somebody? That's what I I was talking to Raphael yesterday. You know, I saw that stuff that they're trying to do. I'm like, boy, I got got harder than fish grease, man. (laughs) And I called him. I said, man, this is crazy. And then God said, listen. That's your boy and all, but you have to forget them, folks. You don't mind me missing that, man. Okay. Ah, no, nah, he said, you, you can get angry, and, 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 but don't sin. I've had some things happen to people, you know, uh, some injustice. Say injustice. I'm all off script now, but. I don't like it when people get taken advantage of. I don't like it when when wrong stuff happens to people. I don't like it when folks spread lies about people. I just don't like injustice. I, it just bothers me. Well, I found out I got the spirit of God, and God doesn't like it. But he said, he said, listen, don't you get in trouble? He said, yeah, don't, but don't you get in trouble? Talking about them folks now and dogging them folks yeah. now. Yeah, amen. It don't have to have happened to us. Amen. So he, he just checked me this week. That's, good. That's why I don't be listening, watching all them crazy cop shows. <laughs> and all, <laughs> well, not, not so much the shows. You know, it's it's hard not to it's hard not to see these these videos. You you research and something. I don't know how to turn all this stuff off on my computer. So maybe one of y'all geeks can help me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, dang, I don't want this. I would that's a, anyway. <laughs> but you ain't even got 
I said, this don't, this don't even make no sense. Yeah. I need me a, a, a anyway. <laughs> they on point, okay. Um, let me give you a definition. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to come back to that because I, I, I have something down here. Okay, the um, definition of forgiveness. It is a decisive act to release somebody that's offended you. It is a choice not to retaliate or hold things against them, but to respond like Jesus would. Mm. It has absolutely nothing to do with how I feel. It is a decision. We're going to talk more about the feeling part in, in a little bit. Forgiveness is not to be confused with trust. See, that's all the, um, Brother Jim, that's all the, sis anyway. <laughs> All right, okay. Forgiveness is not confu be confused with trust. And, and, you know, trust, trust is something that someone has to earn. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Forgiveness is, is okay, we, we, we grant that. We, we give. But trust has to be earned. And trust is not earned with, I ain't going to do it again. That ain't trust. <laughs> I, I promise, no. That's not trust. Trust is earned over a period. I got this. <laughs> Who was that? Huh? I know. There's a lot of people. See, they're they covering for you, Jim. They say, they say there's a lot of people. Okay, but I'll go with that word. Trust is developed over time. It, it's developed over time. And some people have not earned access to you yet. Well, who you think you are? I'm somebody that's guarding my heart. That's who I am. Now, now I've, it's funny. I, we mastered this. We know how to, hey, how you doing, girl? You good? Yes. But you can't even get on the same sidewalk with me. No, really. I, it's, because it's a, it's a decision. But, but trust Trust, it, it takes time. It takes time to develop that. And if, listen, if you ever give it back to them. See, I don't think they're ready for this. No, no, no. Well, well I'm a Christian. Well, God, dog, and I know you're a Christian, but you got a brain too, right? You don't ever have to trust them again. You don't ever have to trust them again. If you, if, I'm going to get to that part. Okay, okay. Let me give you a tip before we get into it. Uh, my death, my death. The scripture says God is faithful and just to forgive us, right? Yeah. Now, folks are not. Okay, here's another tip. God said he will remember them no more. Folks will remember them all the time. <laughs> okay, here's some reasons why some people are hesitant to forgive. And, and we kind of covered this a little bit last time because it seems to be, it seems unfair for them to receive forgiveness when I got hurt. I got pain, but they get freedom. <laughs> okay, now, we have to forgive, right? I said we have to forgive. Who, pastor? People, spouses, children, Grandchildren, my son's coach, my daughter's teachers. Where where y'all at now? Where y'all y'all don't, don't don't leave me? No, because sometimes we just feel like I have a a God ordained right because they're doing something. See, that's why I said they may not do it to you, but we can carry that, especially as parents. And, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so we, have to, we have to forgive. Amen. And it's all because I want God to forgive me. Amen. Now, say, I have, I have to forgive. No, no. Okay, I need you to say it with some attitude. We have. I, I have to forgive. I have to forgive. 
Uh, okay, let's do it one more time. I need a little more juice on it. Because. What's that? Who was that? Oh, okay. It's a lively crowd today. Huh? They got them on this side. Okay. Because I want this to register. I want this to push out that option if I feel it. I don't know. I want, I want to have to push all that out. Okay, we're gonna say I have to forgive. You can get you can you can do all that if you want to. <laughs> On three. One, two, three. I have to forgive. All right, thank you. All right. Whew. Now, Pastor, why do I have to forgive? Now, now I said that because God will answer us, right? If I don't forgive, he won't forgive me. But here's the other reason. This is, my, this is my reason. Because Jesus has given us an inheritance. And in that inheritance, that inheritance contains authority over every enemy that comes against me. My inheritance and claim, this is why I gotta forgive. Because if I don't forget, I'll block all of this. I'll block my healing, I'll block my restoration, I'll block my unprecedented favor, I'll, I'll block the protection for my family, I'll block prosperity over my life, I'll, I'll block the blessings of the works of my hand, I'll block the, ble the fruit of my body, I'll block the flourishing. And old, when I get old, I'll still be flourishing. Yeah. God, dog. <laughs> I, bl I block the peace that passes all understanding and, and I'll block the ability to overcome whatever tries to hold me down or hold me back. Wow. See, that's why the in what the enemy's after, he's after your anointing, yeah. he's after your favor, he's after your inheritance because he understands God has put something on us and put something in us that he has no answer for. No answer for. But unforgiveness will block all of that. It will block all of that. I don't care how hard I pray. If I'm unforgiving, I'm blocking because God is pushing toward me. The Bible says the blessing shall come on me and do what? He said, if I seek him first, he'll do what? Matthew 6.33. Let's try it again. <laughs> and you're going to say, at. <laughs> I got to forgive. <laughs> Yo. You know what? You know what? I did this today. I did this this morning. Because I, God is just teaching me. So, see, sometimes you got to forgive in advance. Like sometimes you know you're going somewhere, like, like at work. You already know. You already know. You already know. Sister Bucket Mouth going to say something. That was too strong. You forgive me. Okay. No, 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 no. But, but you know, let's say you, you, you work in a, in a hostile environment, high intense, and you already know. You already know. You got, you got the, you got, you got the Tylenols in your bag. Cause you already know about three o'clock. But here's what you gotta do. Father, you know what? Be before I go in here, Father, I just forgive everybody today. I forgive everybody today. I don't know what's coming at me, but you know what? I'm just making a decision right now to forgive everybody. And, and you have to make, forgiveness has to be, you got to be sensitive to it, and it's got to be regular, and you got to practice it, and you, you want to master forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to hold on to stuff. You don't want to hold on to stuff. Yeah. And so that's just, that's a little exercise. I said that because I did that today. Because I know somebody here ain't going to like me or something I say or something. Why he got the hammer? Why, why he got a black shirt on? You know, people got all kinds of reasons to say, why he say it like that? I forgave all of, I, I forgave all that before I got here. I did. Okay. So, so he's after the anointing. Okay, let's, let's, let's get practical now. So, what to do if you hurt or you wrong somebody? 
Here's some steps. I got five. First thing you do is admit it. Another way to say it is own it. Say own it. Own it. When you hurt somebody, own it. And hit, you, ever do, you ever have somebody do this? Okay. And don't try to explain it away. Here's what people do. Uh, Tamika, I'm sorry I said that about you. But. <laughs> now, you just wiped out everything you just said. And, and that's not owning it. That's not owning it. No, no. You, 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 you. Well, I'll get that in a minute, but no, no. Admit it and own it. You can't, you can't release it and, forget, and get rid of it if you don't first have it. I would have done this, but, but I would not have done this. We have people, you know, we, I would not have done that, Pastor, if she hadn't said, listen, did she put a gun to your head and make you do that? Well, no, but, 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 I said, you that weak. I'll come back over here. So, so you're that weak where you, you had to do that because she said something. Well, yeah. I said, have you ever been pulled over by the popo? <laughs> yeah. I said, did you go off on him? No, I just pulled out my license and stuck everything out, out the window. <laughs> You got to do that nowadays. Yeah. I said, well, why didn't you go off on him? Well, I, you know, I didn't have a... Uh, oh, so you're telling me you have some control. Amen. That's what you're telling You have some control. You have some self-control, but you decided not to use it over here, and now you're using a lame excuse that she made you do it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so... So you just you just you just picky about where you're gonna use your self control. You can control that thing. You don't want you know if you work in an office somewhere and and you know you got the cheese the cheese got the big cheese you don't walk into his office. Hey, you know what, man? Look, you don't do all that. You walk in there as humble as humble as you know how. <laughs> you walk in there, um, and then you you make sure you, you already know you're going in there, so you're gonna put a little extra starch on your shirt. <laughs> hey, Mr. So and So, uh, how? And you start talking like all perpendicular. <laughs> try, try to talk all part. You know you don't talk like that. <laughs> Why? Because because I got control. Okay, I'm not gonna spend this long on all of them. So, okay, own it. Everybody say own it. Own it. Okay, the next, the next thing is fix it with God. Man, I, 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 I messed up, Father. I messed up. Can you help me? I'll tell you what, you know, can you help them have mercy on me too? I know I messed up. You remember when, um, um, the prodigal son came back home after smelling himself with his daddy. And he said, Father, I sinned before you, and I sinned before God. So I want to make it all right. And so, so we have to fix it with God. God, I'm your child. This is not how your children act. I want you to forgive me. Here's the third thing. Ask the person... Then you ask the person you hurt to forgive you. And then you make restitution where you where you can. I'm talking about what to do when you hurt somebody. And the fifth thing is establish rules and restraints on your life to not repeat. Okay, four. One, two, three, four, five. This is five. Okay, just don't put numbers down. <laughs> why y'all making me? Why y'all making me work today? Okay, I, the first one was admit it, own it. The second was fix it with God. The third one was ask the person you hurt to forgive you, right? right. And the fourth one was what? Make restitution when you can. Five. We on five now. Okay, and this is important. Establish 
rules and restraints on your life. So you don't repeat the same thing. You may, you may have something new, but people don't like it when you do the same thing over and over. They mercy. They'll give you some mercy, but boy, then they're going to start like, stay over there. Okay. All right. We got that? What you, that's what you do when you hurt around somebody. Put some re rules and restraints in your life. If a conversation starts going somewhere and you know it's about to escalate, just put some rules. Like, okay, uh, bop, 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 bop. what's that? We're not going there. Yeah. Wait till I get to, I, I can't wait to get to the other part. Okay, but what do you do when you've been wronged by someone? You pinpoint the offense. What does that mean? Prince, you did this. We're not ambiguous about what I'm upset about. You did this. It was on Thursday. It was partly cloudy, 62% humidity. You did this. No, they need, to, you did this. this. This is why I'm upset. No, because sometimes, what, what, what? Well, you know what you did. No, I don't. I hate it. When, I don't like it when people do that. Well, you know, I don't know. That's why I'm, no, tell me, what did I do? I'm too old to be playing a trivia, trivia pursuit, right? I'm too old for that. I need to know. Well, I know you don't like me. Why do you say that? Okay, I'm not going to get through today. I can tell right now. But no, no. Pinpoint. Uh, Pastor, I'm upset with you. Why? What did I do? Tell me what I did. And I need to be able to ask as many questions as I possibly can so that I can pinpoint this thing and make sure that I focus on that and not on something else. You married folk, uh, all the married people, man, shoot, yeah, man, shoot. <laughs> well, you did this last week. God, dog, last week, that was seven days ago. We did a lot of stuff in between them days. What are you talking about? <laughs> pinpoint, pinpoint the offense. <laughs> I know some of y'all laughing, but... That's because you ain't been. You <laughs> because, you know, no, this, I'm gonna, this hurt me. This. Oh, really? Yeah, this. It needs to be totally clear. This hurt me. Oh, I thought that hurt. No, this. Okay, um. Okay, and pinpoint the offense. Protest, protest, protest the offense. Tell the hey, what you did was not cool. It wasn't right. Protest it, and then you know what you got to do after that? Pardon. Pardon the offense. I do. Yeah, and you know what? You got to pardon whether they ask for it or not. And you know, it's almost like you know. Okay, yeah, 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 you did this, you did this, but you know what, I'm going to forgive you. Well, you don't have to forgive, no, I'm forgiving you. Yeah, I don't care if you didn't ask for it, you're you going to be forgiven. <laughs> you, you, you getting you some forgiveness up in here today. <laughs> because, because I already know if I don't forgive, now nah, I got some problems. So I don't even care if you want forgiveness. You can say, you can put a big sign up, I don't want forgiveness. I don't care. You getting some forgiveness and you getting it right now. Why? Because I, I am not going to get in trouble with God and I'm not trying to block what God is bringing into my life. I'm, I'm, I'm believing too much. I got too much going on. So, so you're going to get your forgiveness, do what you want to do with it, but you're going to get it. I put down here, I'm not messing up my faith, my future, or my forgiveness when I'm going to need some. I'm going to need some for the days out. So I'm going I'm to give you yours so I can get mine. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are something else. Okay, and this is important. Watch this. 
<laughs> now, if you want a relationship with those people, did you hear how I said that? If you want a relationship after they hurt you, okay, I don't know. if you want a relationship with them, you give them a plan of restoration. They, they don't have anything to say. All they can do is nod. Okay, you hurt me. Now, so it's my option whether or not I want a relationship with you moving forward. Now, you're forgiving all that, but that don't mean we got to go to Starbucks no more. So the option is mine. And then if I want one, okay, um, Brother Prince, you know, uh, you know, okay, but, you know, I like you and all, but see, you got to change, dog. And, um, and if we're going to still be friends, here's the guidelines. Here's the boundaries. Here's the parameters. Yes, sir. That's how you do that. Yeah. You don't just let people come back up in your life and oh, what's up? No, this is what's up right here. <laughs> this is what's up right here. Yeah. First of all, you don't come in at me like that. Right. You call. <laughs> and you wait till you get a response. Okay. Y'all get this? And so you lay it out. Okay, this is what has to happen for us to have a relationship moving forward. Yeah. My girlfriend, you know, I, I, got, I got a friend, and I told him, I said, listen, man, we, we, I said, I, I, I ain't into all that. You know, he, he had an issue with his, he had an issue. And I said, I don't spend time thinking about that kind of stuff. And he's all into this. And I said, okay, well, that's what you, you want to, don't talk to me about it. Yeah. It's politics. I ain't been all that time. I got, I got, I got a dream to catch, man. I ain't got time to be, be, be digging into and studying all that. So anyway, he said, so we don't want to talk to no. I said, I guess we won't talk. No, 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 uh, 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 I don't want to lose our friendship over that. I thought, okay, well, here's, here's the parameters. It's been good. So if you want a relationship with them, you give them a plan of restoration. You know, sometimes, <laughs> I said, when I used to, you know, this was years ago, you know, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> you got to say all that, because people are like, is he pastor talking about me? So, but anyway, when, uh, you know, let's say there's a, a, a breach in the marital relationship and, uh, this, 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 this happened a lot of times, and and so I said, uh, so 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 homegirl, your your wife got your password, passcodes, and and can can look at your phone anytime. No, I'm a grown man. <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> y'all funny. I said, well, you're a grown man with no trust. So so she. If, if that's part of the parameters of restoring this relationship, she need to have password, phone records, all that. Yeah. I'm just saying. I just, just, you know, just. Okay, that didn't. Uh... No, because because the one that's been offended has gets to set the rules for restoration. Because I mean, think about you. Think about. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but but. But it, it's going. I'm not going to trust you by Wednesday. I'm not. I'm just not. I'll be friendly. You won't even. You'll think you're all in there. But no, I'm not going to trust you. Okay. Ooh, okay. All uh, right, here's, here's the next thing. You will never forgive if you wait until you feel like it. You'll never forgive <laughs> if you wait until you feel like it. Now, I said this last week, I think it bears repeating. The minute that you choose not to forgive, the minute you choose not to forgive, you just stepped into Satan's arena. 
And 1 Corinthians talks about how he would take advantage of you. All because your feelings, like, well, I ain't feeling it. Yeah, but you're going to feel something else in a minute. If you, don't, if you don't forgive, you just step right into Satan's arena and you say, hey, go ahead and have target practice on me. So it doesn't matter. I'll never feel like it. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, please. Thank you, Jesus. Because I told you last week, I said, your body, your body is not trained. You got to train it. And it'll do, it's just like a little kid. It'll do whatever you allow it. Mm, okay. Look at First Corinthians chapter 9. This is something Paul said I think is powerful. He said, but I discipline my body and I bring it, it what? Into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Question. Is his feelings in his body? That was not a hard question. Is his feelings in his body? So Paul was the same guy who said, that thing I do that I don't want to do, that things I want to do that I don't do, I guarantee you some of that was like, man, I got to forget these people. I ain't feeling this right now. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. See, well, well we, we got we to gotta condition ourselves and train ourselves to get to the point that we do what we know and not what we feel. That's good, yeah. What do you mean? Well, we, we know the word. We know the word says forgive, but we got to do what we know. And we got to tell our feelings to shut up. Yeah. Yep. We got to take control. Listen, we have to take control of that internal dialogue and conversation. That one that's trying to get you to take the easy way out. You know what you're supposed to do, but if you don't tell us, if you don't take charge of that conversation in your head, you'll end up doing something you really don't want to do or, or, or not do something you should do. So we need to do what we know, not what we feel, because our feelings will always fluctuate and take the easy way out. So Paul said, no, no, no. I bring this body under the subject. I tell this thing what to do. I tell it what. Well, that's why you need to fast sometimes. Say so you're not gonna eat for uh, 48 hours. Ah, we're gonna die. Okay, se <laughs> 72 hours then. Ah. No, that's the whole. That's the whole process of fasting. Is that you letting this body know I'm in charge. I, my spirit is brand new through Jesus. I'm renewing my mind through the Word. And what you're gonna do? You're gonna cast the deciding vote, and you're gonna go. Listen, it's gonna it's gonna be two against one. You can't win. So a lot of times we know what to do, but we don't execute. It's because we allow this body to just just go all over the place. And Paul said, "I bring it in. I bring it in subjection." Can I have one more cookie? No! <laughs> and you laugh at that, but the same thing is, well, we get, we get ready to hit some pay there in a minute, but the same thing is, when I ought to keep my mouth shut because I have no discipline with a cookie. Oatmeal cookie. <laughs> because I have no discipline on how many cookies I'm going to eat. <laughs> now I'm saying something, I'm Poison and spewing poison out. I'm killing my son's destiny with my word because I can't control my mouth. I'm speaking death to his dream because I can't control my mouth. I'm putting my husband over the edge now because I just got to say it because I can. And it's just two of us here. So I go outside and say, I didn't say it. They'll believe me. Don't you? Okay. I gotta bring that thing under. You gotta, okay. I, I, I got so much to say. This body will tell you you're tired when you're not. You just, you just slept nine hours. No, this body will tell you, oh man, oh, you're tired. You're not tired. This body will tell you you're hungry when you just ate. 
Spent two hours at Golden Corral eating. But it'll tell you, five minutes, boy, I need to stop by the, by the stove. I need to get me a snack for the way home. No, this body's crazy, man. It'll tell you stuff like that. I'm not even gonna get through for sure. But 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 all this goes Paul said, I bring it under. He said, all this stuff is going through my mind too. I wanna take the easy way out. Wow. Yeah. I don't wanna let folks know I got a weakness. Let me act strong. I'm I'm running. Watch me roar. Ah. <laughs> no, you're not strong, lady. You got you have some deficits. Quit trying to be strong. What? Yeah, quit trying to be strong. See, see the, the, the lion don't have to say nothing, does he? And everybody like, oh, oh, oh. That lion just sit there. <laughs> you don't have to tell people you're strong. It comes from within. Okay, can I go on? Oh, man. Okay. So you have to override that negative internal conversation. Stand up to yourself. You take charge. I'm running this. That's what you got to tell yourself. <laughs> One thing I, I adopted years ago, I said, I'm not going to let anybody control my emotional state. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm not gonna allow, and boy, I tell you what, it's more than a notion. <laughs> Cause folks do stuff and you just like, you just have, sometimes you just need to sit down and step back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but, that's, but that's okay. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right, because I have control. Yeah, and that's all a part of what he's talking about. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, go to go to Luke chapter six. Let's go to this one. Why you going there? Yeah, go there. The, the next thing is you you cannot forgive without the power of the Holy Spirit helping you. It's too hard to do it on your own. Just just cry out, Lord, I need help. I need help. Here's what I want to do. Okay. This is part of the forgiveness process. The word tells us several things we're to do concerning forgiving people that mess with us. Um, Luke chapter 6 verse 27 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. I know, right? Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Now the word bless means to speak well of. To curse means to speak evil of. Okay, you ready for this? You cannot walk in forgiveness and be a gossip. You must stop repeating the offense everywhere you go. To whoever listens. You gotta stop talking about it. I remember um, I heard this preacher say this years ago. He said, you never talk about what you want people to forget. But see, the more you talk about the offense, this may be the first time they heard it, but, but you're hearing it again. And, and you're, you're building a wall, a cell around yourself with that issue. Yeah. God said, speak well of, bless, bless them. Don't keep repeating it. And, and, and people, people don't need to know. I mean, I, folks don't want to know all of that, but, but we're talking about you. Don't keep rehearsing it. Amen. Forgive him. Ah, oh, this man did this. Yeah, okay, you forgave me, right? Yeah. But you know, I'm telling you, man, I don't, I don't know why he did. See, quit rehearsing it. Amen. And quit digging it up when you get mad. Whoa. Whoa. That's good. 
What you do? I just dug up what I forgave. See, that's that control again. I know you're angry, but don't give it. What you got to do, I re remember I forgave. I released that. Yeah. Now, if you were here last week, I told you, I gave you right at the end, I told you why you need to forgive. I guess I'm going to I'm think I'm going to give that back to you again today. Because you, you know, God going to give you some incentive. He gave us enough. But you, you, you quit rehearsing it. Quit rehearsing what other folks say about it. What did he say do? I'll help you. He said, love your enemy. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. He said, pray for them. Bless them. Speak well of them. I ain't got nothing good to say. Well, don't say nothing. Amen. You know, the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, in the, in the love chapter, it says, believe the best of people. Yeah. Find something. You can find something good. If you're going to, if you're going to, if you're not, if you got to say something, find something good to say. But you don't understand. You are sh you are short circuiting the forgiveness process by continuing to repeat it, and you're blocking what God wants to bring to your life. Let, he said, "Bless them, Father, in Jesus' name." You know, but. I release the blessing of God over their life. Peace, harmony, power over them, over their children, over everything that concerns them. And Father, I thank you. And I just, I just, re I remember that I, I released them, I've forgiven them, and God, because see, now you're sowing. In Job 42, it says that Job captivity turned, and he got double for his trouble when he prayed for his friends. Yeah. And so, so yeah, and so, so keep it on. And somebody try to bring it to you, say, "Oh no, um, uh, that's that's a dead situation." Yeah. Well, no, this is what I heard. Well, that's that's okay. You, uh, I mean, you got to be strong enough to do that. Yeah, Romans chapter twelve, please. You can't get over it if you keep rehearsing it. Yeah, that's a good one there, Pastor. Ooh. Pray for your enemies. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 14. He said, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. So again, now this is Paul writing this. Um, Jesus wrote the first one. He says, um, don't, you don't have to keep rehearsing it. Don't bring it up. It's like, you know, you ever, you ever burn yourself or something or you have a scrape and you, your, your body starts healing and the, it starts to scab over. Digging it up and talking about it more, it's like taking the scab and scraping it off. And now you're back down to the raw skin. Every time you talk about it, every time you bring it up, every time you enlighten somebody, you're pulling that scab up and you keep doing that. If you don't, you keep doing that, you might get infected. And so, He's telling us here, let it, let it, let it go. And bless and not curse. And James, he said, out of your mouth come blessing and cursing. It should not be. Don't bless them. I mean, don't curse them. Well, I, I just think, well, no, don't think that. How many of you want the power of God in your life? Amen. All right. Okay. I want to... Um, <laughs> Will you give me uh, let me end with this. Ephesians chapter four. I'm gonna read it out of the King James Version. Thank you, Lord. And then I'm going to close with the scripture I closed with last time. Oh, did I? I didn't give you the lies that we keep sipping on, did I? Let me, you want the lies? Yes. We don't want you to. We want you to put that sippy cup down. Okay. 
Okay, here's a couple lies. I gave you some last week. Here's a couple more lies that keep us sipping on the poison of unforgiveness, just like, like, it's, like we justify. One lie is we believe holding on to the unforgiveness is what punishes the other person. That's a lie. It, affect, it doesn't affect them one bit. The other lie is that there is power in having something to hold over another person's head. Another lie is holding on to another person's sin, weakness, or failure makes us feel superior to them. I'm more spiritual than they are. That's a lie. Because of all the other person's wrong against us, he or she owes us. You owe me something, sucker. You going, uh-uh. No, you, okay, maybe I shouldn't use that word. Uh, you owe me, you're you going to pay and then, you know, and we're this way sometimes, like, no, no, you haven't suffered enough. You owe me, so I'm going to hold this over your head. Carrying these wrongs makes us feel deserving, and therefore we're comfortable being demanding. You need to do this. You need to do that. After all I put up with you, no, you need to do this. Um... What about those people in abusive situations, Pastor? You talking about all that trust and forgiveness and all that? Uh, I just got one thing to say about that. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Protect yourself. <laughs> Protect yourself. God's not called any of us, men or women, because we got some women that, 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 that like to swing and throw stuff too. Um, he didn't call any of us to be punching bags or doormats. And don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you let some preachers tell you. Just go pray. But you know what? No, you can go pray in another area code. Another area code. If she beating you down, go pray <laughs> in another area code. God didn't call us to that. You can still forgive them, but, but you have to put some molecules, face, in between. Well, he, God said for better for worse. That's not what he meant. For rich or poor, for better or worse, this ain't better. I know. And it, it ain't going to get better either until you get better and find you some, some space. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, let me read this. Um, what, was that, what did I tell you to go? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I can do this justice in two minutes. Thank you. I appreciate that encouragement. But I'm going to try. No, I'm not going to try. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick something here. This is, well, God gave me this uh, yesterday, actually. Okay, verse 30, 31, 32. You still listening? Yeah. Then I'm going to give you that scripture. If you weren't here last week. Okay, verse 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, excuse me, as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Man, I, I, I think I said it to an offering, but this is the Remember Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. Yeah. See, the kingdom business need to look like this where we're treating people right. Amen. Anyway, notice he didn't say, um, forgive as God has forgiven you. But he said, as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Did you see that? Now, Christ is not Jesus' last name. 
It's not, no. What's his last name? He doesn't have one. The word Christ is the translation It's a translation of the word Messiah to mean the anointed one. The anointed one. Over 50 times in the New Testament, you, you'll see the phrase, the Christ. The Christ. Remember Peter, it, Jesus said, who the man said I am? He said, you are, you are, you are, how do you say it? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then, um, few verses down from that, Jesus said, um, he told his disciple, don't let people know I am the Christ. What that meant is he, he came, Christ was more, more, more of a title than anything else, that he, he's a savior, he came to save his people, and he came to heal and to restore and to, and to recover people. Christ is, that's, it translated anointing. Anointing. What does that mean? We hear that in church a lot. And, and in the Old Testament, the kings and the priests had the anointing. In the New Testament, every Christian yeah. is anointed. Yeah. What is the anointing? It is an empowerment. Yeah. It is an empowerment to do things beyond what you can normally do, like forgive. It's not, it's not an entitlement just to lay hands on people and they fall on the floor. It's an entitlement, it's an empowerment to live the victorious life he called us to live. It's an empowerment to do what you couldn't do before this thing came on you. It's an empowerment, my God, to, to he said, I will bless the works of your hands. He says, you'll have peace uh, that passes all understanding. All that comes from the empowerment. He says that no weapon formed against you can prosper. Why? Because you have that empowerment. He says, he says, whatever, whatever comes at you and whatever tries to hold you down or whatever tries to hold you back from what God is taking you into, you have this empowerment. Empowerment that nothing can stop you, nothing can hold you. He says this is an empowerment in you, and 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 there's no there's no limit on what you can do, but you have to yield to it. But what he was saying here is forgive yeah. for Christ's sake. Forgive why for the anointing's sake. So that so that this power can kick in. And bring something on your life that you can't get any other way. So that the power can kick in and the works of your hands will just prosper and grow and, and increase. Power so that now your family is not all dysfunctional. Somebody, somebody can be a priest in the house and bring order to the Talking about power. And so that's what Ephesians 3.20 says. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can what? Ask or what? Or think according to the what? Power. That's that anointing. And he said, when you don't forgive, you block that. On, you stop great. that. That's you great. cut that off. And you gotta, you, you, you don't have an advantage. Yeah. I'm sorry. But he said, when you got this power, you got an advantage, man. This is why we can look at the storm and tell it what to do. Yeah. This is why I can, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, yeah. This is what I don't have to chase skirts and butt and tails no more. Why? I got power over this flesh. Come on, I know. But some people don't know they got power over that. They say, well, I'm weak. You ain't weak. You got power. You need to tap into that power. When you're not walking in forgiveness, you, sh you forfeit all that. That's why he said, he said, forgive for, for Christ, for the anointing's sake. Yeah, yeah. It ain't about you. But I got stuff I'm going to bring into your life that, that you can't get any other way. But, you're forg but you get in your way and, and, and forgiving, not forgiving, it blocks all of that. Isaiah chapter 10, he says, it's the burden removing, yoke destroying power. And so, and not only is it for you, we're supposed to be doing kingdom business. That's anointing it for service. 
I said, it's for service. People ought to be benefiting from this thing. When I don't forgive, now I'm shortchanging somebody else and I'm relying on worldly wisdom or some kind of wisdom to get them free. When if I got this anointing, it's God who's at work in me. He does the work. That's how that works. That's how that works. Everybody in here that's born again, there's an anointing on your life to take the struggle out of life, to, 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 to cause you to go, whoa, how did that happen? And then you just have to sit down and say, man, that's God. You in here today, if you, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're struggling with, the anointing will break that yoke. Whatever you're trying to get free from, there's an anointing to break that yoke. Amen. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tap into it. And if unforgiveness is the issue, man, you can break that thing by, 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 by. When my clock say zero, 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 zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what God has put on you, and that's what it, that's what's at stake when we don't forgive. Satan is able to reduce us down to the way we were before we got saved. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you can handle it, but, but once you get born again, you're a superman. Amen. You can speak into situations. Right. Folk trying to hurt you and set, and set you back. I'm not, they, can, they can cause a pause, but they can't win if you yeah. stay in that place and you rely on the power of God. Yeah. Lord, I forgive them. I see what they're doing. I, I release them from that. But I thank you. Every tongue that rise up against me, lying against me, accusing me, uh, uh, misrepresenting me, I shut it down in the name of Jesus. And I claim total restoration. Everything they caused me, I'm claiming restoration for that. God, shut it. I better get out of here, y'all. I'm about to. Hallelujah. And that's why the devil try to keep us in our feelings, to make us powerless. Bubba, come here. This is my, my little partner. Come on up here, man. I want, I want to tell him something about you. Now, how old are you? I was four. Okay. God told me the other day, you got to forgive him. Well, sometimes, you know, they, they do something, they get on your nerve. <laughs> I mean, he, don't, he rarely gets on my nerve. This is my partner. But God said, you got you to gotta release that. Because what you want in your house and you want him. See, he just got here from heaven. He ain't been here long. So he's still sensitive to the spirit of God. So you got to watch what you say. I want him to understand that when he comes around G Paul, I feel something. He loved, he loved to pray. He said, G Paul, let's go, let's go in your prayer room. Let's go pray in tongues. Wow. Don't it? You like to pray in tongues? Yeah. Then we go pray in tongues. I love to play drums in your office. You like to play drums in my office? He is not bashful with this. <laughs> but how's your voice? He got a mic on? No. How's his voice carry you? Yes. Say something. You lean close to it. Oh, I lean close to it? Okay. Now, we do sing a song. We, do, we, we got a couple songs that we sing. But we're not going to sing for you today. Okay? We're not going to sing today, all right? We're not going to sing today. All right? You want to sing? <laughs> I don't think it flowed with the mood of the service. Okay. But yeah, but see, see, sometimes we think, cause, stay with me, cause, cause these guys little, this is God's creation, man. God's got a plan for this guy. And every time, you know, we, we only get him for the weekend, but every time, every time he come, G Paul got his hands on him and blessing him. Blessing him. Blessing him. Yeah. Why? Because and then, then the, I talk about the forgiveness, Pete. Because sometimes, you know, he's a kid. When he get, when he get tired, and he, you know, he he he's something to deal with. When he tired, well, it's, it's time for a nap. 
Y'all know, know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> but, uh, you funny. And so, I be like, you know what he gonna be doing once he, yeah. yeah. Um, but but God said, no, you you release. I'm a, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this here. Okay, thank you, Bub. Thank you, man. You you good dude. Give Bub a hand, everybody. <laughs> Forgiveness is a force. And that needs to be a common word in your house. Either forgive me or I forgive you. And it's a force that we release. And 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 when you walk in, in forgiveness, you walk in humility. Because none of us are doing it all right. So I want us to, let's all stand, please. I want to, uh, okay, uh, honestly, because I didn't get to that scripture, but I will if I, if, if I need to. How many of you in here is like, Pastor, I heard all that. That was good. That was good. I enjoyed it. But I'm not, no, I'm not sure if I'm ready to forgive. You don't know what happened to me. I know, I know. I don't want to know it. Your business. Is anybody here? You still struggling with forgiving? And you, you like, I, I'm just not gonna do it. Oh, I need, I need some more proof to do it. 